Hi everyone, welcome back to Level Up with Dawn. Before we get into this video, please subscribe down below. I promise you won't regret it and it's completely free. Today we'll be talking about the basics of investing in stocks or shares. So I'm going to take you through some frequently asked questions about stocks and investing in stocks to help you understand what this is, how it works, and why it works in certain cases. So what are stocks or shares? Stocks or shares are a piece of ownership in a company. Usually a company will sell pieces of ownership in their company in exchange for money. That money could be used for paying off some debt, that money could be used for projects that they want to increase their value in the future, or maybe if they are in a distressed position and they need extra cash, they will sell more stocks or shares in order to get money to help stabilize their financial situation. So what do you get when you buy shares? It depends on the type of share that you buy. The two most common types of shares are preference shares and ordinary shares. Preference shares look a bit more like debt because you have a set amount that you get every so often and it's based off of probably an interest rate that's decided and you are entitled to get that regular payment whenever stipulated in that contract because of that type of share that you own. If you have an ordinary share then you have voting rights so at all the AGMs that happen you would be the person who goes there you have one vote in whatever decisions are being made at that AGM as well as you get dividends and the dividends are not guaranteed they are a they are nice to have I think because a lot of companies have a dividend policy and they st state out this is the kind of dividend we want to be paying every year going forward it looks like you are entitled to it but if the company is in a situation where it's best for the company to not spend that extra cash and keep it in the company to keep the company afloat or because they can get better returns investing in a project that will better help you as a shareholder in the future because your shares will increase in value then they have absolutely all the right to not pay you a dividend for that period or for that year or for that time span whatever the time span may be another question is why would people buy shares there's two distinct types of investors when it comes to shares there's speculators and there's value investors a speculator looks at the actual price of the share at the time and that you wouldn't expect them to keep that share for longer than 12 months even 12 months i would say is a long time but it's literally treating it like it's foreign exchange when the price is down buy it when the price is up sell it make that piece of profit move on to the next share if you are an, a value investor then you need to dig deeper into why you're buying into the share because you are going to hold it for a long period of time sometimes for the rest of your life and you're just going to pass it on to your descendants you need to look at why are you buying this share why do you think this company has value and do you think this company will exist 10 20 50 years down the line because that's how long you're planning to keep this share for of the people who buy for value you could buy shares that inc that are expected to increase in value over time you could buy shares that are known to pay regular dividends or you could buy shares that are a bit of both. Maybe not as steep of an increase in price, just a steadily acceptable increase and also a steadily acceptable growth in dividend income that you'll be getting. Some companies don't pay dividends. So in that case, in my situation, I would be making sure that the capital growth that I'm expecting, capital being the value, is high but personally i don't look for shares that don't pay dividends i don't they don't have value 
in my life for me it doesn't make sense i need that cash flow i'm investing with the aim of having cash flows coming in as regularly and as often as possible so i don't invest in shares that don't pay dividends it just doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense for my life but you do what makes sense for you that's the most important thing when it comes to investing in times like these where we are in a recession and we're expecting that recession to prolong for a while a lot of people are looking into buying shares and so the common question that comes up is how do you know when it's the right time to buy a share a lot of shares are decreasing in price Sasol being one of them one of the most notable ones and people are wondering is this now a good time to buy a share um you know they say buy low sell high this is probably as low as the share is ever going to be in price maybe i should just buy the share all of that reasoning makes sense but one thing you need to remember is you are not buying the share price you are buying the business so look into it in the case of Sasol, yes the price decreased drastically if you think this is a good buy look into the company and make sure do you think considering what every the directors are saying that this company can survive in the future that they have actually a hopeful future you can see them making money you can see them regaining this share price that they used to have because if you don't then what's the point of buying the share now because what if that's where it's going to stay forever you don't know that but that's the point you need to make sure you buy into the business don't buy the share price I made that mistake with Bitcoin, <laughs> but also I don't think it's a mistake, but we'll talk about that in another video, but buy into the business, don't buy into the share price, unless you're a speculator, but talking from the perspective of a value investor, buy into the business, make sure you think that this business is sustainable, make sure you think that the industry that this business is in is sustainable, what if it's in an industry that 10 years from now, technology is going to take over and it's going to be displaced. Look into things like those before you make your decision. Another question that I want to address is other ways to invest in shares without investing in the share directly. Because it can be a bit daunting to invest in a singular share and be 100% exposed to that share. And whatever happens, you have to deal with the, the the brunt of it investing in something like a unit trust or an exchange traded fund could be a nice way to dip your toe into the market because you have a variety of shares that you're exposed to some counteract each other so when one is down the other is up so that keeps your risk very low and it keeps your risk managed Having an investment in one share is risky. Even if the company is good, it's still risky. Even if this, the share price is shooting up, it's risky. Why? Because it's concentrated on one thing. Diversification is so important in this game. And the most diverse way to invest and to dip your toe and to learn about shares and investing in shares would be to look at unit trusts and exchange traded funds banks and asset managers offer these products so look into them tax-free savings accounts can be invested into the market instead of having a set interest rate you can have a tax-free savings account that gets its returns from investing in a fund that could be a start to building your portfolio to one day having the conviction and the trust in your analysis to choose shares and be 100% exposed to them. The last thing I want to mention is 
be mindful of the cost of investing. It's it's great to invest, it's good to invest, and sometimes what's forgotten is the costs. Let's say a unit trust. Some of those funds have management fees. Uh, investing in a share directly to actually purchase the share whoever's purchasing purchasing it for you or if you're doing it off of a trading platform there are transaction costs there's taxes if you want to sell your share after you feel like you've made the returns that you want then there is capital gains tax dividends your dividends get taxed they may tell you you're getting one rand per share but actually you're getting 80 cents per share because you get taxed 20%. So please be mindful of that so that you can make the right decision on which asset manager to go with, which share platform to go with, um, which trading platform to go with and to maximize your returns because who wants to have their returns reduced by fees? So that's it from me today. Thank you for watching. Please like this video. Please share it with everyone that you know. Please subscribe. Again, it's for free. What are you waiting for? I mean, I think this is the seventh time I've seen you. Like, dude, subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. The last question that I want to answer is around other ways. Come on. Come on. Come on.